amazing. I've been following Mark from so long, from his uh, surf garage days since the Boo Rays, you know, through the Highway Matrons, to Fred's Variety Group. And it's amazing how he encompasses so many feelings of life, you know, from the downside of life to the upside and everything in between. And he takes an amazing perspective on all sorts of life, you know, from his own sideline to what other people's perspectives are. And I love the way he melds them all together. When I first saw the Highway Matrons, I uh, thought Mark Martians had a million dollar voice. It was a voice that bore the history of his heart and of his habits, you know, whatever those might be. There are some bands that come along that make everyone else seem like a cliche, and I thought the Highway Matrons were certainly, certainly one of those bands that make null and void much of what you've been listening to. And, I just thought they were wonderful. I saw them four years ago. That was the day I got my first guitar. I watched them play at the Way Out Club, and I had never seen such use of the distortion pedal or beautiful vocals and things like that. And I vowed that one day I'd be doing the same thing. And not imitating, but just inspired by. Myself and some friends in town used to be uh, in a band, and, uh, and we sort of met Mark through that, through the, the way the way you usually meet people in that kind of situation. And uh, and we asked them, along with uh, about I guess a total of about 20 other bands, to be involved in these trading cards that we did as a kind of a scene builder, I guess is the best way to say it. And, uh, and yeah, and luckily luckily they did it along with the other bands, and uh, I think we had a, ended up with a pretty pretty cool set of. Things, you know, we belong even more underground than the underground. We should be buried even deeper, I think. I like a uh, pickup truck that we don't do anymore. I really like Cobalt Waltz. I think he put a lot of time and effort into that. But mostly I like the ones that I wrote, because I can kind of tell easier where we're going with them. Just, just loved music. I mean, I have like thousands and thousands of records. I've just been a huge music fan since I heard pop radio in 1974, and I, that's what I guess what I wanted to do when I was in one of the last version of the Boo Rays. And uh, one night I was on stage and feeling like really stupid to be up there, you know. And it was at a college gig, and nobody was really paying any attention. In the midst of that show, I got over my stage fright for good because I figured otherwise I'd just be at a bar trying to talk to some people or some girl. And that this way, I had what I was gonna say all planned out in a song, and I had an amplifier and a microphone. So I felt like it was a great privilege and I always feel that way. My friend Mickey, who has like an 11-year-old son who's apt to get in a lot of trouble, he's been trying to steer him towards music because his theory is that, because he quit music and got in all kinds of trouble when he was a little older than his son, so his theory is if you have that, then you're not going to be bored at least, and you're also going to have like a means, which people don't allow themselves very many means of public expression with strangers, I guess, you know? <laughs> Yeah, it's a channeling of desires that could otherwise cause you trouble socially, I guess. And it's a form of communication where verbal communication lacks. Yeah, I mean, I guess a, like the frankest answer to why I play music is because in some ways life is very mundane. No matter what you do, people get into a rut, and I think music is a way to elevate yourself, at least mentally, from the rut. It's productive to like make money and raise a family, but I think everybody you know, has not really necessarily goals beyond that, but the understanding that, that other things exist past that. Maybe it's a way to exercise that, give the rest of it some purpose too.